The Friday Footy Show, proudly brought to you by Towards Zero for the 2019-20 TIO NTFL season. Welcome to Umpiring Round. With more than 60 games every week of the season, that's a lot of umpires required to keep things ticking over. They're the 15th club in the NTFL, and like every other club, they do training nights, reviews and game preparation. This weekend is an opportunity for us to appreciate the umpires, so be sure to shake their hands post-game and say thank you. This season, we already have 100 new umpires to the NTFL. The youngest umpire is 12 and the oldest is 77. There are five remote umpires from the Tiwi Islands and Maningrida, and there are 42 umpires who also play footy. You can play one day and umpire the next. So to get involved, head to umpire.afl. It's great to see some of the AFL NT exec team have already put their hands up to give it a go. With the weather experts predicting hot temperatures across the top end this weekend, be sure to stay well hydrated and find good shade. There have been some changes to fixture times to allow for the games most affected to have extended breaks at the quarters. Head to the AFLNT website for the most up-to-date info. All women's Premier League games have been adjusted to have 16-minute flat quarters and we've enlisted our friends at Kennard Tyre and Power and Water to help us out with some extra fans for different grounds and water stations. On Wednesday night, the Kennards Hire NTFL Junior Under 10s had their first run, along with the Women's Division 2 Social Comp, with both providing lots of fun. This weekend, we'll see all grades join the competition. And as of Friday morning, we're pleased to report there've been no forfeits received. The Men's Premier League triple header is gonna be a big one. It all starts with the Tiwi Bombers battling St Mary's in a special tribute game to Jack Long. The Saints have pulled in some big guns, naming former 244 game AFL star Jared Waite, as well as Essendon's Jake Long for his first game in Saints colours since 2013. The Darwin Buffaloes will then play Waratah, with one of the teams likely to go three and zip, or zip and three, before Wanderers and Nightcliff clash in what's sure to be an entertaining game. Look out for AFL umpire John Howard in that game as he's our special guest. Out on Norbuilt Oval, either Southern District or Palmerston will get its first win, unless we have another draw. You can catch all men's Premier League games live on the AFLN TV YouTube channel, along with highly anticipated women's Premier League clash between the Palmerston Magpies and Darwin Buffets. There are some great games in the women's side of the draw too, with undefeated Nightcliff coming up against reigning Premier's Waratah, while Southern Districts or Pint will pick up its second win. St Mary's host Wanderers and either Tracy Village or Big River Hawks will chalk up its first win of the season. Don't forget to get your round three NTFL tips in as there are plenty of prizes to be won if you reckon you can pick the winners. If you have any questions regarding the NTFL season, head to the AFLNT website and jump onto our FAQs page which might be able to help. If you missed it, on Wednesday a big announcement took place with the NT government working with the AFL, as well as the Gold Coast Suns Football Club and Melbourne Football Club to bring AFL games to Darwin and AFL and AFLW games to Alice Springs for the next four years. The clubs, along with the four other Next Generation Academy clubs, will work closely with the revamped NT Thunder Academy program to help identify talent and provide better opportunities to more of the NT's aspiring footy players. There will also be great benefits for local coaches and community footy programs, so watch this space. Given its umpiring round this round, we had a chat with Premier League umpire Joel Morrison. Hear what he has to say. Well, Joel, with the NT government, as, as well as the Gold District, to, to bring AFL well, games to Darwin and AFL it's great. I have to say the fitness levels have taken a while to catch up. It's been about eight years, I think, since I last did a football game down in Melbourne. But it's, it's good to see some familiar faces who are still running around from when I started and also plenty of new young faces, which I think that's been the, the exciting thing is there's a lot of new people coming along and getting involved in umpiring. So it's great to have great numbers down at training, which makes it a great social environment. Well, can you share with us how you've been to umpiring? 
had a chat with Premier League. I started umpiring around about 15. Um, made my Premier League debut at 16. So I got involved at a really young age and I had a couple of football injuries and I won an under-14s premiership for Waratah. So Waratah was very much my club that I was involved in. But uh, I certainly had very limited football talent. So it was uh, natural for me to get involved in umpiring as opposed to trying to climb the ladder as a football player. And it was I just found it was a great way to, to stay fit. It meant I didn't have to get a, a part-time job. I was able to quit my job at Leonard's Chicken and just get involved running around and umpiring. So it was great to earn a bit of pocket money as well. Social environment. Well, can you share with us how you got started? Well, I think the biggest thing for me was coming back and umpiring this year with a gap of eight years and a lot of new laws. Um, but certainly just the skill level up here in particular has really gone from strength to strength. What I think is really pleasing is the growth of women's football. Um, it really does feel like a great community. So to be able to see the women's game so strong and great numbers in football is good to see because sport is so important in the territory. And I think that community spirit is very, very important. I mean, I didn't have to get a... I'm a field umpire. I have tried everything. I've done a bit of field, a bit of boundary and goals. It takes a certain type of personality and mindset, I reckon, to be a goal umpire. So maybe a bit later on in life. But if you love um, running, boundary is great because you can just run all day. But what I really enjoy about field umpiring is both the, the physical component but also the challenge of decision making. It really tests you mentally and physically. It's just a, a challenge that I enjoy. Strength. Well, I think... Well, umpiring really got me started where I am because I got involved in umpiring which led to some casual volunteering work at the AFL Northern Territory and then that led to making some connections prior to me going to Melbourne for University which led to my first job working in the AFL and had about six years working for the AFL and time was right in terms of looking for something else and the job popped up at Cricket Australia and ended up working on the Big Bash League and then in terms of the role I'm in now is that combination of spending six years within cricket, um, being able to obtain some good contacts and some good knowledge within that sport and balancing the knowledge of cricket with the knowledge of the Territory obviously being from up here and uh, put my hand up for the role and had an interview and 18 months later here we are. I got involved in umpiring which at the ball cricket never stops in the territory it goes year round. We've just come off a really busy Darwin cricket season. The Alice Springs cricket season is now underway and all of our Northern Territory representative sides are also um, up and running so we just had our under 17s national championships. Our 19s come up in December and we've also got the Big Bash League match in Alice Springs on the 20th of December with the Hurricanes and the Sydney Sixers um, setting Alice Springs alight before the Christmas break so there's plenty going on. The knowledge of cricket uh, put my hand up for the role and had an interview and 18 months later hit the chat. On another note, Tim Eldridge was named the NTFL Player of the Round winner whose impressive sliding mark got the most votes. Congratulations to Thomas Clark, whose vote for his mate earned him the fan prize. Remember to stay cool out there this weekend, wear your hats, drink plenty of water and sit under the shade. And that's all. See you next week on the Friday Footy Show.